Hello everyone, it's Wednesday if, you, if you're counting. Welcome to the uh, MUTV group chat. Let's check in with uh, the chaps. We've got Maisie, Wes, Danny and Ben Thorny. It looks like he's on holiday, Ben. Yeah, it's lovely down here, I must admit, it's very nice. But I think it's going to be like that everywhere, isn't it? Next few days. Yeah. God, I, sir. I just look forward to your weather reports every morning, Ben. <laughs> very nice. Glad to be of service, Daniel, it's fine. Love it, mate. <laughs> what was that? I just want to just start, but just quickly to get your views of where you think we might be with a possible restart. We saw uh, Gordon Taylor yesterday, the PFA, saying that games might not need to be 90 minutes, that there's talk of neutral venues, of no relegation, players fearing for their health. I mean, is this sort of desperation to restart leading to maybe the sort of integrity of the whole league disappearing? What do you make of that? I agree with him. I think we should have flag flag goalkeeper, width to the pit, three quarter size goals. <laughs> Honestly, uh, I don't. I mean, obviously, the lockdowns affecting some people's mental ability to think properly, and uh, I think Gordon's one of them. <laughs> how, on earth, how on earth can you start cutting down the length of games? Absolutely clueless. I don't okay. understand what that would achieve, anyway. To be honest with you. There are bigger problems than the length of time a football match has lasted, surely. Yeah, don't get it. I, what, what's the reason behind that, Stuart? I don't, I, to be honest, I didn't understand it either. I don't know why it would be any safer or any, you know, I, 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 I just didn't understand it. I find it really weird. But when you start talking about stuff like that, I mean, neutral venues as well, a lot of people are saying, well, you can't be having neutral venues. And then some teams who are in relegation trouble saying, well, we'll play if there's no relegation. I mean, is it... it What's the answer? Suck it. Come back in second. <laughs> I think that's I the know. problem. Nobody has the answer. I mean, everyone's just throwing out their 2P and not thinking it through. Do you know what I mean? I think, um, but uh, yeah, playing 45 minutes and don't, don't make sense because you're still contacting people. So which, whichever way you look at it, it's, it's got to be thought through and it, it's not being thought through at the moment properly. Whatever ideas anybody comes up with, uh, it, it's just open for somebody else to pick holes in it. And, uh, and it, it's just going to be like a tree. There's going to be branches coming off everywhere and, uh, and you're never going to get to one conclusion. And I, I, at this stage now, I think you're right, Stuart, it has sort of started to reach desperation states where they really haven't got an answer as to how they're going to do it. And yet the Bundesliga might start in a couple of weeks by the look of things. So it shows that something is possible. Where's, where, where is it going to end? I think a lot of people are going to look at that shoe, the Bundesliga, see how it goes. But one of the big things for me is the players. The players are saying, is it safe? I mean, no one's really sure. Can't really give them an answer. Um, and it's not going to happen anyway. Otherwise, I mean, if teams go ahead without some of the players, what, what does that mean anyway? I mean, is there any point? Um, but I think a lot of people will look at that Bundesliga just to see how it's gone. But there is no answers yet. These, you know, people are throwing, like, like the lads have said, they're throwing stuff out there. That's it. It's going to be interesting to see some big, big decisions to be made over the, the course of the next um, few days, you suspect. Um, great reaction yesterday to um, Dimitar Bogotov's appearance yesterday on the show, which I'm, I'm glad you enjoyed. But just some of the reaction um, from the YouTube channels. This one, Dimitar, first touch goat Berbatov. First touch, greatest of all time, Berbatov. This one, literally my favourite player of all time. I've drunkenly DM'd him on Instagram, asking when I'll be an icon on FIFA too many times. Uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, don't, don't drunkenly DM people on Instagram. This one, Berbert should have gotten more time at United. Another one, Berbert for director of football. Now, that would be that would be fun. And when I think of Berber, I think of three things. The hatter against Liverpool, the skill turn and assist for Ronaldo, and the ball control. Brilliant player, and uh, it was good to have him on yesterday. And it has been all strikers on the group chat this week. Andy Cole was with us on Monday. Dimitar was yesterday. And today, uh, a man who won two Premier Leagues for United, the former French international, Louis Saha, who joins us. How you doing, mate? Good to see you. I'm, I'm good, yeah. Thank you. All, you're all good. All good. How, are you, coping? How are you coping yeah. with the lockdown, Louis? Sorry? How are you coping with the lockdown? I think I'm fine. I'm, I've been, uh, let's say, blessed that uh, nobody from my family or friends that I know has been like really hit by this. So uh, indirectly, uh, I feel sad because it's such a big scale, such a, 
yes, yeah, I think it's horrible to feel, um, yeah, to feel that uh, through our, our old DNA. So I don't, I don't like the the fact that uh, all that hasn't been planned in so so many ways, so many factors. So yes, not going into details about politics, but uh, I just felt like uh, we've been let down in some ways. You know? Well, we were just talking about the situation here and the fact that football might come back, it might not come back. But obviously, we know in France it's, it's not coming back till September. What do you make of that decision? Um, yeah, as Ben mentioned, you know, like uh, any any kind of like decision, uh, quick ones where you, you 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 choose your camp and in some ways somebody will bite you and say, oh, you should have done this, should have done that. So. Some people say, oh, basically, uh, may the decision has been taken too quick, uh, too fast, because there is like a lot of uh, time still to, to, to take that decision. So whether it's like coming from above, because uh, politically they need to look good, because it seems to, to be connected in some ways, you know, they made so, so many bad decisions. So I don't know, uh, football is such a, a big uh, way for a politician to actually get their ideas or get their you know, get their reward in some ways. Uh, you know, they attack uh, in one way when they want it, when they need it, and they actually use it when they they think that uh, it's uh, the great target. So I don't know. I, I really felt like uh, football uh, need to be like listened in the way that the players need to be listened uh, if they feel secure because they are families. They have to go back home and and and, and do a lot of things. So whatever you are, England or, or Spain or France or Italy. It's the same, you know, the players, the actors, the fans, everybody need to be listened. And the government and all those people, they, they have to take uh, um, those decisions uh, with the actual uh, actors, not because of economics or whatever, you know. Yeah, just look back, look back on, your, look back on your, your time at United a little bit. How do you look back now? Do you look back with a smile? Do you enjoy it overall? Every, every single day, every... I would say let's start with the bad thing, um, like injuries, like miss the Champions League final. All this as like it's part of uh, my story, and I, I I love them and I respect them because it's part of my dedication in some way. Uh, I, I tried hard, you know, so I have absolutely no regrets. Uh, made frustration, yes, frustration because you want to score more, you want to to win more, to play more. All this is normal. It's part of a our, our job, um, but I never cheated. I never, so I really enjoy every minute, the banter, the actual uh, competitiveness, uh, you know, I, I mean, like there is like, um, I was like speaking to a fan the other day about uh, my time uh, and United tried to explain and, and I was saying that it, it's like already super hard to be a United player. But then it's like, I just realized how much uh, uh, simplicity was in the camp. I felt like, uh, you know, I, I felt like it was a, a true family. It's like there is no such a um, uh, star system and such a ego uh, um, driving uh, people and all that. So I felt like it was all about competitiveness and which is respect. You know, it's like, yes, some days you have good days. Sometimes you have bad days. Sometimes you have like anger. All this is like, it's normal. So I really enjoy all that it was it was me uh, i really loved uh, every minute and uh, so yes this is uh, yeah, a great souvenir uh, uh, wayne rooney spoke very highly of, of you and enjoyed playing with you uh, louis in, in your, your mind who was your best sort of strike partner the best person you had an understanding with yeah was was uh, for so many reasons the first one is like he's uh, he's very intelligent or so his way of like reading your game uh, anticipate your weaknesses and 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 fill the gap. Uh, manage to actually uh, without talking, uh, without uh, saying much. Yeah, feel like uh, being part of your brain. You know, he, he understand you. So make things very very easy. And he was running more than me, so he was covering the the the, the ground for me. Um, but yes, as a very young age, uh, I see someone able to handle the pressure on different aspects. So I always respected that, um, uh, look very smart uh, from a young age. Uh, I like as well his uh, temper. You know, has like bad temper, bad, uh, 
way of reacting, being very authentic. I love that. Uh, you know, um, I, I respect people like this. Whether they do bad things or good things, it's like all about being themselves. And this is not very easy to do. So that's why I always love to play with him and, and love to play with any player as well uh, in the squad where we were ourselves, you know, we were true. Well, as you were with, you obviously in the dressing room with, with Louis. What did you make of Louis when you arrived? And what did you make of him as a player? Louis as a player? Well, ask anyone. Louis was up there. Yeah. Uh, strong, two feet, could jump. Um, I know we talked about his injuries and... You know, I've had a few as well, and that that was a shame. But as a player, he was unbelievable. He fitted in straight away, and um, the way like he was just talking about him and Wazza. Um, you know, could score goals from anywhere, um, right, left foot, and top guy as well. You know, we've had some great, great laughs in the changing rooms. <laughs> I let Maisie mention them, <laughs> but uh, you know, like he said, it was like a family and. And that, that was one of the things, I mean, I've always been there, so it's a little bit different. But knowing the lads coming in, um, especially how Berber talked yesterday, how shy he was, I mean, you would never have known that. But it probably was the same with most lads and a bit overawed. So just to settle in and make them feel at home straight away was something that was naturally flowing through, through the club, not just the players, but the staff as well. Every, everyone involved. Louis, yeah, what was it? Go on, oh, sorry. Louis, what was it like walking into the dressing room at, at Old Trafford? Yeah, it was the, um, uh, a moment that I was like uh, cherish and, and, and I don't know, um, maybe it's different for every, everybody, but uh, I was like a very laid back player uh, in a way that uh, I didn't like when anybody was putting pressure on me, uh, even the manager. I was like some, somebody who was like uh, in, my, in my zone, you know, and it's only in the dressing room. So all the meetings and all the, the, the buses, the meetings, all that, and, and go there, I was, I was still in my thing. But it just when I arrived in the dressing room, feel like the shirt was there, everything was organized for us to, to be prepared and all that was very special for me. That was an indication that I need to switch on, you know? It was like, uh, w w what is like the actual uh, setup of the actual um, uh, plan game that I had uh, all those things were very important. It's only at this moment in time that uh, my face would change in some way. Uh, I was like uh, some, some, sometimes like really uh, laid back that people could feel that I was not maybe on it uh, straight away. But uh, when I was in the dressing room, I think it was a very special moment for me because this is basically where I was like starting my game. Mm -hmm. What's the best player you play with, Louis? And what was your favorite goal as well? Best, best player for sure, um, I have to say Cristiano. Um, yeah, Cristiano, uh, I love as well to play with uh, Scorsi. Um, but my, my best goal probably uh, for a sentimental uh, reason was the, my first one. Because uh, he actually gave me the foundation. Um, I may change uh, now and then. Sometimes I think about another one. But, uh, but uh, this one is, is special because... It was, uh, as well, I was like saying about the, the, the week before, because we had that kind of pre-season when I arrived. Uh, it was back in, in Jan. And um, I remember like really struggling in the first two sessions, like going in the toilets and remain there, like not trying to show to the lad that I was struggling. I was <laughs> dying in the toilets proper before the, 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 the game and uh, managed to actually felt really light uh, during that, uh, that game, that first game really connected, everything was easy, uh, slow motion. Uh, that sensation is, uh, is special. That's why I think I took that free kick without being like dedicated to taking free kicks. Uh, I remember that I think Queenie was here, maybe Gigzi was not, I don't know, but uh, it was a left foot uh, free kick. And I took it. And, and this is the last time I took a free kick in United. So, magic. <laughs> <laughs> One more than me, Lou. <laughs> so you mentioned Ronaldo there as well, mate. When you arrived, he was obviously a very talented young player, but sometimes frustrating and not, not the end product. But a couple of years later, he, he was a colossus, you know, one of the best in the world. But you were there at that time. What did he do? How did he change? 
Um, I would say that uh, he always like uh, improved, but his uh, ways are never changed. Uh, uh, I see him through his career. You see the same dedication that he was like uh, 17, 18, maybe like uh, with less confidence in a way that maybe people were challenging him because he had to prove uh, that he was the best player. But, uh, you know, add that kind of like confidence to, to, to train and to work hard and to be consistent, whatever people saying, uh, uh, it was just amazing uh, skill. Better than having like talents, because the way he was like Hubble at this age to analyze and grow and maintain all those things that I said, when you have like a lot of qualities, for me, it was genius. I mean, like you ask anybody, um, you know, in, in like working hard when you have that much talent, it's not everybody who's doing this. You know, you get uh, uh, complacent, you're happy with your level and you think that you made it, you know, uh, and you want it way more. Um, how you have the vision to see something way more when you are already at United at this age. It's really hard, you know, um, and he managed to do, to do that. So that's why I had a lot of respect. And even if, if he was younger than me, you know, I, I still remember that he said to me, Louis, you need to smile when you play. And when the kids like this uh, saying that to you, when you're older, you have more experience, you say, hang on a minute. And you realize it was so true, you know. And that's why I think, like, through his career, uh, even when he maybe could be cheeky in a way that he look at, uh, at people, people just can't understand. They get frustrated because they are not in, in, in his league. It's simple as that. It's, you know, it's like so above the, everybody that when he speak normal for him, it sounds like strange for everybody because, no, you can't predict what he's going to do. It's, it's amazing. I mean, like, uh, yeah, power, speed, uh, I would say skills was was uh, one thing that is important in uh, in a career, but it's to analyze when to do it, the timing, the actual precision that he, he always uh, try to improve. I mean, like nobody can do that. Ben, Danny, you got anything for Louis? <laughs> Before you came to United, Louis, were you aware of how big a club it was, or was it a surprise when you first walked through the door? Uh, it's strange because uh, I wasn't seeing the, the size of the club um, because, as like I said, I had like um, that maybe vision. I said, oh, yes, this is a great club. And then straight away when I arrived, I felt so comfortable. You know, players were so simple, family members, competitors, and all that make it natural. I couldn't really feel that pressure because even – when we have, were in crisis, the manager will take the pressure on his own shoulders. We never felt that bad, you know, so I, hang on a minute, I don't, didn't realize. It's only when I, I finished my career and I try to compare to other clubs, when I start to see that uh, the club is followed everywhere in the world and all that, that I started to realize. I, I, I honestly said to you, sometimes I was in my zone. I couldn't really understand the the interaction that we had, the power that we had, the responsibility that we had. And maybe when Patrice Evra said something about that pressure that he, he, he felt was higher than a national team, I used to say otherwise because, hang on a minute, how you say that? You know, you represent your country and, and, and you know you're telling about the club. But he said, listen, maybe there is like 100, maybe 200 million uh, followers of French national team you know, combined with uh, the population and maybe fans everywhere in the world, okay, 200. But United is a billion. This is simple, you know, it's mathematics. And I say, hang on a minute. He's right. <laughs> and, and this is how big the club is. You know, it's like there is no, no, nothing like this. And I realized that after my career, thinking through and, and, and see the actual um, emotion that we are producing. Yeah, it took me time. Yeah, Louis, Wes has already, uh, has already, you know, and he's summing up with you, he's touched on all your attributes. And by the way, probably the best player I've ever seen controlling a ball on his chest in midair. I, I, I don't know how you do it, but it is quite an incredible feat. Uh, and I've witnessed it firsthand when I played against you when you were at Fulham. But we've talked about all your attributes, but who would you say in your career that you found most difficult to play against? Mm. 
uh, I, I always like kind of like this is a striker talk in some ways. Uh, um, I feel like arrogant in some way. I don't feel like one on one a defender can used to stop me in some way because I felt like I could go both ways and, and, and left and right. Uh, it was more a combination. Uh, I didn't like to play with two defenders where, like I would say, one was like clever and can read the games and the, the other one was physical. So it was more a pair than, than one player, one defender. I didn't like to, to play against uh, Rio and Vidic for that. When I was like at the Everton and I played against them, um, and, and the worst was with Van der Sar. I don't, I don't know how, but uh, I will explain that because when I, I don't have the massive tank, you know, I can't run all day. So based on that, when I was pressing and trying to make them like, because my game plan was to actually visualize those defenders and say, I'm going to hurt them. I'm going to make them uncomfortable all day. And actually, um, it was maybe the only only times when I was playing that I was like feeling like uh, powerless actually because with the, the the three of them they were passing the ball around me I couldn't get anything out I was like even physically I had like the competition with Vidic and I had the actual uh, smart move and, and the way to control and and give the space to to the um, to the opposition, you know, to, to actually uh, play around us, it was just like horrible feeling. I, I hated that really bad because I felt like anything that I was coming up with as a solution was not enough. So I really disliked to play against them. And physically, um, yeah, I had a lot of competition with defenders uh, at United. All of them as like skills that I could train. You know, I could improve. So I really, really like that. I really enjoy. Um, I mean, like it's like for a striker who really like to improve, it was the best. Uh, it was the best uh, training. You know, it was unbelievable. We go, Louis. We got to ask you about United right now. Do you like what you see with United? Well, before the lockdown, before the lockdown, obviously, what you make of United right now? Would you like to, for instance, have Bruno Fernandez behind you, feeding you in? De definitely. I think he's. Uh, He's a very clever player. Um, he's got uh, so much energy as well, confidence, leadership. That's basically what we needed up the, the field um, as well. You know, you have like that uh, kind of clever uh, thinking. You know, sometimes that uh, unpredictability that we needed because like when you have a, a, a certain type of strikers already like hard to read, you need someone who is actually able to deregulate, you know, to have to have that kind of like flair um, that make it very hard to read. Um, and I like for representation that goal when they combine with, uh, with Marshall on that free kick, you know, you yeah. can see it's, 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 it's like, yeah. yes, this is the stuff that win championship in some ways because you have to be uh, unpredictable. So I really like that. And I think that uh, we can surprise a, a, a few next season. I really do with one or two uh, more addition. Um, I really liked it. Uh, obviously, it took time for Ole to understand how to 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 uh, I think I think feed the the players who needed more. I would say responsibilities, more confidence, and challenges in some ways. Um, and the combination of the introduction of the youngsters as well uh, with Greenwood and all that has been done really uh, the right moments at the right time. All this uh, preparation takes time, frustrate sometimes fans, but I understood. Uh, make, make sometimes you make mistakes against City, for example, different games away from home. Uh, yes, but that's a learning process. I understand. Now we are on a way that we can uh, use the, those data and, and, and go forward. I think when you look at the, the strength of uh, Sir Alex Ferguson, I think when he was preparing games, he could have like plans with different teams. Say, I will play this way for Arsenal, I will play with, this way with, uh, with uh, Blackburn or whatever the teams, you know, because he, he understood and he had all this data. And it seems like all the data gone when he left. And now we had to uh, reassess and, uh, and redevelop all those data and have that understanding. And maybe I will think that maybe next year we will have like, more capabilities to anticipate all those games and how to approach them.
Okay, before you go, Louis, did you ever get the hairdryer from Sir Alex or not? You, you, sp you spoke warmly about him. Did, did you ever get the hairdryer? Yeah, yeah, I, I did uh, twice. Uh, let's say one and a half. Um, the, the first one came uh, to, to, uh, in my second game. Um, funny enough, uh, I, I felt like I was still like on fire in some way. I scored my first game. Uh, second one, first half, I scored two. And uh, come uh, half time and, and, and it destroyed me. I mean, like I couldn't <laughs> understand um, why, you know. And he was shouting. I knew he was for somebody else because uh, I scored two goals. I felt like really, uh, really well. But I understand that my standard was not good enough because I missed two seaters. And maybe my attitude was not right. I don't know. I can't really remember how I missed them. But uh, uh, I know that uh, he made it clear that uh, it was not good enough. And uh, I understand straight away that I was like in a different club right there because uh, the guy was just um, um, so dedicated. Uh, it was just amazing. Uh, so that's why I think there is a lot of respect for the air dryer. And he helps development so, so bad. <laughs> Scored two and still get it. Oh, big time. Yeah. Big spot and, and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, mate, thank you so much for it joining us today. It was great to have you with us. Keep staying safe, won't you, down there? And we hope to see you again soon. Um, somebody who you all know will be our guest on tomorrow's show, Michael Carrick. Great player for United now, obviously, key player in a key part of uh, the backroom staff of Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. So Michael Carrot joins us on the group chat tomorrow. Hopefully the sun will still be shining and Ben will still have his sunglasses on and we'll, <laughs> we'll see you then. Take care, everyone. Cheers.